Again, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Welcome to 2013, viewers. I'm Grizz, and let's get you caught up to speed, because there's actually a lot to talk about. Let's start off with some positive things. First off, Josh Bender and Sean Palmer are off the wagon. Those guys are sober. That's right. I hear Palmer's getting ready to make a serious comeback for CR this year. He wants redemption on last year's champion, Kyle Strait, in the dual slalom. And that's good news. And we all know Bender, he can get a little loose when he's drunk, so it's good that he's not drinking. Uh, speaking of Bender, his best bud, uh, Randy Spangler, the Imba Trail Specialist himself, is pumping a lot of love into the community, which is great. We need a lot more Randy Spanglers in this sport if we want to get anywhere. Uh, Randy is going to be making uh, a pump track in Auburn, which is sweet if you live in Auburn. And if you don't live in Auburn, well, you got to travel to Auburn to ride Randy Spangler's work. No big deal. And he'll also be putting a lot of trail work in the Mount Shasta area. Shasta is pretty much, from what Randy told me, they're, they're making mountain bike tourism their main focus moving forward into 2013, which is sweet. Like I said, we need more Randy Spanglers in this sport. Sam Hill is not riding for Specialized anymore. He's jumped ship, and he'll be riding under the management of Nigel Page for the Chain Reaction Cycles team, alongside with Matt Simmons and uh, Joe Barnes, whatever those UK dudes are. They don't race in America, so what do we care, right? Aaron Gwen's going to beat them all anyway. USA! USA! <laughs> all i got to say about the Sam Hill thing is it's unique, it's exciting. They'll be riding a new bike. Uh, everyone, who's, everyone I know that has ridden one of those new proofs has nothing but good things to say about it. Uh, I've done the parking lot test on it and it felt pretty... I drive one. Yeah, it's a nice bike. Anyhow, the best thing about Sam Hill and his whole move and swap over is the comments on all the other mountain bike websites like Pink Bike and Vital. It's funny to watch people try and like act like they know what they're talking about but they really don't but they're just bored and they need to type something. It's awesome. I love this digital era that we live in. All right, now coming up for the Fox News portion of my little newscast here. I read this thing on Vela News and got a headache from it, honestly, and so I'm just going to try and regurgitate it to you um, the way I see it. USA Cycling is trying to preserve business. Right now, there's, there's a clear, they're in clear present danger. We have Enduro Racing, which is on the uprise, and Enduro is not dealing with USAC. There's no need to. Um, there really is just no need to. And USAC doesn't like this, and nor should they. I mean, after all, they're in the business of staying in business, right? So they got to sell memberships, and in order to do that, they're targeting pros and finding them. USA Cycling has actually gone after and fined a couple of cyclocross pros or you know, endurance pros for racing non-USAC or UCI-sanctioned events. Wrapping it up, USA Cycling is trying to preserve business. They don't want small race promoters to continue to grow the sport in healthy, sustainable ways. Uh, they want to increase their bottom line. And can you really blame them for it? We got a recession on our hands and they got bills to pay like anyone else. Shoot, I might just buy a USAC racing license just, just to support them because I love them that much. If you are a UCI or USAC registered pro and you race a non-USAC or UCI sanctioned event, you run the risk of getting fined this year, and you can feel about it the way you want, but I say USAC till the day I die. Basically, that's the news for now. Uh, I'm still kind of nursing a hangover from Las Vegas. And for Decline Magazine, I'm Grizz, and just remember that we still party.